What's up guys, today I'm going to be going through 5 things that can fix your media play issues. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to go through in regards to your media play is pausing and playing your media play within your sequence. Now, it sounds a little bit extreme sometimes to try and get it to work, and obviously you see there's this beautiful little test of a uh, SpongeBob is going, it, there's no pause or anything. So if I wanted it to pause when he goes to pick it up, all I'd do is I'd get my media that's right here, I'd right click, I'd click split section, and I'd let it buffer. It can take a hot second to actually do it depending on like the resolution of your footage, the kind of footage it is and whatever. And then I just need to drag it to however long I want. So if I wanted like a second gap, because this is at 30 frames a second, you can see once it starts to do its thing, when I click play in just a second, it will pause at that point, and then it carries on. I want to put a video just now of it actually doing it in like a render so you can see that it works in render form. Um, I'm not going to go through like movie render queue settings because this isn't a tutorial for that. So, you know, if you want to see one of them, just let me know in the comments below. On to fix number two, we're going onto your media plate starting at the wrong point that you want in your sequence or it's potentially choppy or it's not playing as expected. So you can see I'm starting this from zero, so it's doing it as the start of this clip. But if you right click, you'll see that you have, in advance, you have pre-roll frames. So this means, as you can see, it's how many frames it'll roll before it'll actually roll as such. So you might want to set these to zero, and then what you'll see is it gets rid of those arrows, so it won't roll before that. Now this can work if you're having really choppy footage you could do the opposite so you could add a couple more pre-roll frames as mine isn't very choppy it's not gonna make much difference it does affect performance obviously so you won't necessarily benefit from it in your viewport but you'll benefit from it in the render another thing with this is if you want to start at like halfway through the easiest way to do that is by just dragging your media sequence and pulling it across as far as you want so it starts where you want it I'm gonna play and caption some things on the screen right now just so you can see what's happening um, and you can see what difference it makes when I change the start point to a certain point and then play the sequence compared to what happens and you might find out something that happens at the end of the sequence and we will get to that fix very soon. Okay, so here we have our boy Kevin. In the case that you might be doing like an Unreal scene where someone's in like a theatre hall or they're presenting in front of a screen and you might want that screen to like back like them to give them some like shape and depth. You might want this to, obviously you can see it's emitting light but it's not affecting our character. Now this is basically an oversight sort of by Unreal to be completely honest and it's completely fine. It's not harmful in any way but all you need to do is as you can see, go into your material instance, go to your big instance I guess and then go to your master material and when you've got all of this you basically just need to change this from translucent to either mask or opaque I prefer mask because then it still keeps that slight translucency because if it has a certain opacity mask to the mesh then it'll still sort of follow it whereas if you went opaque it would just be a block so if we take this back to mask now and we click apply we should be able to see he's now being backlit from this and you may depending on your footage obviously you may i've already done this but you may need to amend your like brightness of your clip depending on how far you want to push the emission obviously that's quite bright but in a camera you can obviously then affect exposure while still keep keeping this but yeah this is how you would get like a bit of like a backlight on the character and you can see even with this really poor lighting it gives a nice bit of depth a nice bit of shape to the face which would be really good for like like i said presenting in front of a screen or that kind of like atmosphere this next thing will be around like crossfading and that kind of stuff. So you can sort of see I've sort of already done it here. When you have two different clips and you might want to like cross between them or do like a typical kind of like dissolve between them. There are two ways that you can do it. The basic way is pretty much as you can sort of see, I've got both ways here just ready to show you guys. The first way you can do it is just by dragging your clip over it. That's pretty much as, as the simplest you can go. And the further you drag, obviously, the slower and smoother the blend will be. But at the same point, it might not be ideal because you won't necessarily get that manual control over it. Another thing you can do is have your like first clip on top. I always find that if my first clip is on the bottom, this doesn't work. 
That might just be my mileage, but get your first clip, put it on top, and then get your second clip, and basically put it on the bottom. But as you can see, when hovering over these little orange things, they sort of change to little arrows that you're able to manipulate, basically. And these are your like ease ins and outs. You can see here, I can do that, and then I can show just how long I want to spend easing in and out. And then you basically just lay them on top of each other so that as the top one like goes down, the bottom one goes up. So the opacities switch at that perfect kind of interlude, right? And they obviously will look very different. And a positive of using this manual way is that you can configure it to be exactly to your liking. Like maybe you want it to be like a really quick snap change or maybe you want it to be like a nice slow, smooth transition, you know? Um, but yeah, that's how you do it in like the two easiest ways. You can also right click on your little arrow and you can change your, you know, your easings if you want it to be just a straight, like no smoothing, just A to B, go. You can, if you want it to be ease ins, ease outs, it's got pretty much everything. And yeah, that is basically crossfades and stuff within your media plate. And the final thing is something that I struggle to actually get going myself and find issues with, but I've had many issues with it in work, but I've not been able to, in the short time I've done like with this project that I've pretty much just created to try and get. Um, I've struggled to like find it, but I can find a lot of stuff online about it. So you'll see like, I'll show some pictures now of like people getting maybe like green lines on their renders that like, it's almost like the screen isn't covered by all of the pixels, you know? And there are two fixes I know to fix this. Um, there's one which is the proper way, really. And there's another which is a bit more of a hashy way. So if we take image one, for example, before I knew the real fix, what I would do is I would take this back into my compositor, be it DaVinci or Prem or whatever, and say it was 1920 by 1080 and like the bottom was green or in this case like that much of it is green I would then just increase my video size to break the aspect ratio as such and then make that compensate for the pixels and then it would fix itself that does work but obviously it's not right it's a bit choppy and it's not ideal so the main fix for this kind of stuff is if you go to your plugins I don't have it in this project but I believe it's no longer much of an issue in 5.3 it mainly affected 5.1 and 5.2 so if you search for Electra you will have your Electra player if you use this from what I've tried and what I've tested this pretty much gets rid of that you may need to re-import and reset up your media plate as long as you do it while having this plugin enabled you should be good as gold and you should have no other issues regarding the green lines and if you do pull back to the dodgy little adding like 10 more pixels on your horizontal or your width <laughs> i know it's not ideal but in a render like this you wouldn't notice like the differences as long as your like layout was fine in the rest of the video okay so that's it um let me know if you guys have any more media plate related issues or issues pertaining to unreal at all um i'm really happy to keep making these kinds of videos um, I'm thinking the next one might be more of a gameplay video. So if you've got any specific gameplay queries or coding queries, let me know. I will catch you all next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and smash those comments. I'll see you all later. Peace, love, goodbye.